Hi, I'm Matt Ambrose with the Defense Acquisition University. For the next 10 minutes or so, I'd like to walk through the technical reviews that we use in the Department of Defense Acquisition to manage the technical development of our systems and make sure that we are meeting our requirements and the design is maturing the way that it should through the acquisition lifecycle. So let's take a look time-wise at what each of these technical reviews are and what their purpose is as we walk through the phases. The first one, generally, that we're going to have is the Alternative System Review, or ASR. And that is going to occur in the Material Solution Analysis phase, and it's going to look at the alternative systems that we are going to determine which one is the best of to take forward. And that's going to look at the technical maturity of those systems, it's going to look at the technical risk of those systems, and it's going to take a look at the user's requirements here in the initial capabilities document and the draft capability development document and say, does this technical approach really have good promise in terms of meeting those requirements? So that's kind of what the alternative system review is all about. And as we're doing that also, we're going to be developing our systems engineering plan, which is going to lay out all of these technical reviews that we're going to use for the rest of the life cycle after milestone A. That is due our first systems engineering plan, which we're going to update later on at milestone A. The next technical review that we will typically do is a system requirements review. So once we have contractors on board to do our prototyping in technology maturation and risk reduction, we will do an SRR. We'll sit down and get a good mutual understanding of what the technical requirements are in the system with our contractors that are going to be doing competitive prototyping. And we also want our warfighters to sit in on that uh, to make sure that that understanding goes all the way from the user of the system through to the contractors that are going to be designing and developing the system. So that's what the system requirements review there would be all about. Now later on in technology maturation and risk reduction, as we're starting to get a better idea of the design and the user is solidifying their requirements, we want to have a system functional review or an SFR. Now what that's going to do is take a look at the functions that the system has to perform in order to meet these requirements here in the capability development document and see are we actually accounting for all of those requirements and do we have all the functions in the preliminary look at the design here that the system actually has to perform. So that's what the system functional review is all about. Shortly after that, we should be having a preliminary design review, which takes a look at the design that is based on those functions that we've defined for the system. And now we're going to look and see have we allocated those functions across all of the system design piece parts uh, that we have for our preliminary system design. Now, there's a couple of baselines that are involved uh, and established at these two reviews. As we talked about functions in the system functional review, we'll have a functional baseline established there at the SFR. And we're going to allocate those functions across the system and we should have an allocated baseline by the time we're done with our preliminary design review. So th that's when each of those two baselines are established. Now as we get into engineering and manufacturing development, the preliminary design review prior to milestone B, it has to be done prior to milestone B, should have given us a good idea and good um, risk assessment of where we are in the design to start now on the detailed design. So the detailed design work is going to happen after milestone B and once that detailed design work is done, we will have a critical design review. Now the preliminary design review and a critical design review are the two design reviews that are actually required on our system. So you're not going to get through your different milestones without having those two particular technical reviews. Now at the CDR, what we're looking at is the detailed, final, produce to, build to design for our system. So at that point, we're establishing a product baseline for the system here in the middle of engineering and manufacturing development. And what that does, it gives us a design now that we can go and build some production or deployment representative prototypes, some better prototypes than we had back here earlier 
that we can then test in the operational environment and make sure that they work before we start actually producing the system. And we can also prove out some of our production processes at the same time. Now, as we get toward the end of engineering and manufacturing development, we want to make sure that the design actually does what we think it's going to do. And that's going to be our system verification review. And about the same time, we're likely to have a test readiness review for some testing that we would expect to have at the end of engineering and manufacturing development. That's what that's all about is do we have all of the piece parts in place? Is the system ready for testing? Do we have the facilities scheduled? Do we have the people? That kind of thing. That's what a TRR is all about. But the system verification review is going to verify that the system as designed and built actually meets those requirements uh, that we expected it to. So based on the prototypes, the better prototypes that we've built from the product baseline established at the CDR, we're going to verify in the system verification review uh, that it actually does those things that it's supposed to do to meet those requirements. Out in production and deployment, we would expect to have an operational test readiness review uh, to get ready for our big final exam, that IOTNE that we have out there uh, on our LRIP systems. We would expect to conduct a physical configuration audit on one of our first LRIP systems to come off the line. We're comparing now our design and our drawings with the actual physical system that comes off the line to make sure that it matches up and that we have a physical baseline now for our system that matches the design of the system. So that helps us with configuration management is doing that physical configuration audit to say this is what the system actually is in its physical configuration. Before we go to full rate production, we're going to want to do a production readiness review that assesses how well we did in low rate initial production and tells us that our risk is low enough to go into uh, our full rate production. So that's where you would see uh, typically a production readiness review. So that kind of lays out different types of technical reviews throughout the life cycle. And recall again that the preliminary design review and the critical design review are the two that are absolutely required. All of them are tailorable in terms of where you have them uh, for the most part, although it is required to have that preliminary design review prior to milestone B. And all the ones besides the CDR and PDR you can look at in terms of do I actually need to do this review? Do I want to combine a couple of reviews together? Um, how might I save myself some time and money by doing that? Are there additional reviews or do I want to do reviews more than once? Just for instance, this production readiness review here, I said we would do that there prior to our full rate production decision, which makes sense. We want to make sure we're ready for full rate production. However, we also would want to make sure that we're ready for low rate prior to milestone C. So I would argue you might want to combine a production readiness review with your system verification review. Maybe do those two at the same time and make sure that you've got all the data together to prove to your milestone decision authority that you are ready uh, for milestone C and permission to proceed into low rate initial production. Another um, review that I would consider having maybe an additional one of is the sy system requirements review. I would actually probably combine one of those with my alternative system review here early on because I'd want to sit down with the warfighter sponsor of that draft capability development document and say let's talk and make sure we have a good mutual understanding here that stakeholder requirements definition and you'll see later in the in the systems engineering process if you haven't inquired that or encountered that already. Um, let's sit down with no kidding our, our warfighters and say like, what did you mean by this requirement? Let's make sure we have a good mutual understanding uh, before we set down the contractual requirements for technology maturation and risk reduction and the prototyping that's coming up later on in that. Now recall we're doing testing as well throughout the life cycle. So if we line up our different test activities here, they should provide us data for these technical reviews that will help us 
to establish that we're ready for that next decision. That's kind of why we're doing each of these technical reviews, is it gives us the data and, and the risk assessment uh, based on the technical progress of the program to say, we are ready from a design standpoint and from a performance standpoint to go forward into the next part of the design or the next phase or whatever it happens to be. So just as an example, uh, we've kind of talked about some of these, but a preliminary, preliminary design review gives us a look at the preliminary design, right, that allocated baseline. And that gives us uh, the data that we need to say, look, the design is mature enough here now for milestone B and going into engineering and manufacturing development where we can now do detailed design work. So that would line up there. And then as we talked of earlier, our test readiness reviews, generally speaking, are going to be lined up with some major test events. So this TRR here would get us ready for the operational assessment there at the end of engineering and manufacturing development. This OTRR would get us ready for our initial operational test and evaluation, big test event there in production and deployment. So all of these have a certain timing that kind of makes sense based on the information that we're trying to gather and say that we're ready for that next big decision on our program and to proceed on to the next level of the design or the next baseline. Also recall where we establish each of these baselines. You've got a functional baseline here that's established at the system functional review. Then we're going to allocate those functions across the system and take a look at that at our preliminary design review and we would have an allocated baseline established at that time and then finish detailed design work by the critical design review and there we would approve our, our produced to or our product baseline produced to specifications. So this lays out our technical reviews and, and how they are aligned with each of the decisions across our life cycle. I hope this has been helpful. Thank you for tuning in.